any car is affected by winter temperatures. Petrol, diesel, electric. Obviously with the bigger fuel tank, the petrol diesel combustion engines don't really notice it as much. It's, it's more of an acute problem with an EV. As you can see, it's, um, well, it's winter, it's cold. It's below zero degrees and I will suffer range loss. We all will, again, in any car. But in an EV, there are certain things you can do to negate at least some of that range loss. And in a happy coincidence, I'm about to do a range test with Genesis. They've invited me on a coast to coast challenge. And I'm gonna use this and a few tips and tricks that I do to, again, negate some of that winter range loss. You have to do this for 99% of your journeys. I mean, if you're doing a 40 mile journey and you've got 200 mile range, what's the need? But if you want to save money, because the less fuel you use, the more money you save, or if you just want to eke out the range for whatever reason, you're doing a long journey like I'm about to do, then these are a few things you can do to get the most out of the winter battery. Ah, missed. Yeah, I think I'll do the rest inside the toasty warm car. Oh, it's freezing. Right, let's start off with why EVs lose range. It's nothing to do with the oil being too thick or anything like that that affects a combustion engine, among other things. It's down to battery cell temperature, predominantly, and of course, using the heating, which uses the traction battery to get its energy from. So, with the battery cell. Let me go down the terrible and not very scientifically accurate analogy first as to what's going on. So imagine your electricity and you're walking through the sea. That's not as easy as walking on land. You can feel the resistance of the water, can't you? It's harder to walk through water. The colder the battery cell temperature gets, the thicker that gel, if you like, gets and the harder it is for that electricity to walk through the battery. Again, I said it wasn't very technically great, but that's essentially what temperature does to a battery. It makes it less efficient, gives you less range. That's a temporary loss. You get it back when it warms up again. So the first thing I want to mention is if your car supports it, because not all cars do this, preheating it. Now, I don't mean preheating the cabin in terms of making you warm. I mean thermal battery management of the actual battery pack. So it essentially heats the batteries up, the cells, not just the cabin. And if it gets too warm, it cools them down as well. So proper thermal battery management is a significant plus for me when it comes to electric vehicles. And most, but not all, of the modern ones will have it. Now you can do this in several ways, depending on the car. Some have a schedule built into the dashboard. Some have an app that you can use to adjust that schedule. Some is manual only, some is via a key fob. Essentially, you can do it or schedule it yourself using a multitude of methods. But if, let's say, you've got this thermal battery management and you've told the car, whether it's from the app or built in to the dash, that you're setting off at seven o'clock tomorrow morning, that will essentially get the cabin warm and the battery warm. So instead of walking through thick, gooey liquid, the batteries. Well, as far as it's concerned, you're at spring summer temperature rather than winter. So that range loss due to the efficiency drop, well, you don't have it. And if you're lucky enough to be able to charge from home or wherever you are, if the car's plugged in and the charger's set accordingly in terms of the timing, then the, the energy for this comes from the house rather than the battery pack. You may have seen with some cars, I've seen it on my Tesla, for example, where the battery percentage after you've driven a mile or two actually goes up. And you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, how can I, how can I gain electricity? That makes no sense. And it's something that I see a lot as well with home batteries with my day-to-day -day job. Battery percentage is calculated. It's not measured. So if you have water, I could put that into a measuring jug and know exactly how much water is in that. Same with weighing something. You can weigh it and that's measured. Whereas... Think of having a formula that figures out the battery percentage for us to use in our heads as to how much is left. If just one of those 
parts of the formula changes, it will affect the percentage that you see. So you could have two identically charged batteries, but ones at a much lower temperature, and this could be at 70% and this might be at 65%, because part of that formula is the temperature, temperature's lower, it affects the whole formula, and the percentage drops. So if that battery pack gets heated up, certainly from external sources, then all of a sudden that battery has a greater percentage, even though the energy that was put into it initially is essentially the same. Another drain that I've mentioned already is, of course, heating the car up. Now, this is something that I don't really want to say as a recommendation, because for me, if I can't use the heater in my car, then this car is not suitable for me. Yeah, on the odd occasion, fair enough. In the one in a thousand journey where you think, I really need to get home and I've misjudged something, I need to turn everything off, I can live with that. But I don't want to own a car where I have to not use the heater for any small percentage of the, of the time. It, it's not what I intended on buying, if that's the case. However, of course, yes, using the heater will use the battery and therefore it will affect range. I think how much range it affects the car obviously that differs between car and car because some have heat pumps some don't have heat pumps but initially they all use a lot of energy to heat the cabin up and that's why my hands are freezing right now because i wanted to wait until i'd filmed that part before i turned the car on because this car gives me something semi-unique it actually tells me how much energy i'm using for the traction battery to in terms of propulsion it also tells me how much energy I'm using for the heater and also how much I'm using for the general car electronics, things like the lights, the radio, the heated seat, steering wheel. Because again, this is something which I think a lot of people um, are unaware of. You have a 12 volt battery in the vast majority of electric vehicles, which does all the alarm and the screens and the seats, just like it does in a petrol car. That is usually charged up when you charge the car as in the 12 volt battery is charged up when you charge the car. But if it gets too low, hello. <laughs> if it gets too low when you're out and about, then yes, the traction battery will top up the 12 volt typically. Um, so I guess you could argue that using the radio does affect range. I mean, th this is a joke that's said a lot by the anti-EV brigade. Oh, do you drive around with your lights off to save range? Yes, I want that extra four inch of range that LED lights will deplete from this massive battery i'm sat on so you can see there the electricity usage and when i turn on the heating let's put it on auto i want uh, 20 20.5 20 is apparently optimum you'll see this which is the climate control will climb and climb fast there you go 2.2 2.3 that seems to be where it peaks out at because it's heating the car up for my convenience it's at 2.8 kilowatts now. 3.3? Wow, I wouldn't know it went at that high. It could do this probably more efficiently, but it's doing it as quickly as possible, again, for the person inside the cabin to get it hot immediately. And I've seen people driving with the heating off and then they turn it on. So they're a bit warm and then they turn it off again and then back on again. That is very inefficient. As you see, oh my God, it's 5.5 kilowatts is the heating. Once this has settled down, so you know, once I'm halfway through a long journey, I went to work yesterday, that was about 90 odd miles each way. So 10, 20 miles in, it's probably just about 600 watts, 600, 700 watts, it's just there or thereabouts. It, it fluctuates, of course. That's more efficient to leave on than it is to turn off and on and off and on and off and on. Because when this drops to a, a low temperature, which is similar to the, wow, minus one outside, then it puts an enormous amount of effort in to heat it back up again. Think of it like a house. It's more efficient typically in a house that you're, you're in all the time to leave the heating on so it just pulses. It just keeps the heating, uh, the temperature rather, at the same level. Rather than turning the heating off at night and then having to work hard and then off and on, off and on, I'm leaving it on all the time because that's why I bought a car, so I can be comfortable. But if for whatever reason you do need to save energy, either turn it completely off for the whole journey or leave it on. By all means, turn it down to like 18 degrees or something, but ultimately, when you turn the thing on, when you turn the car on, when you preheat it all, that enormous amount of an initial energy, even with heat pump cars, is just gonna deplete your battery. 
a lot quicker. That's why a lot of short journeys have such a large effect on reducing range in winter, because you get all that effort that we've just seen coming into the car to heat you up, and then 10 minutes later you stop and get out of the car. And then you do what you're doing, and then you get back in the car, and then it puts all that effort back in again to get it back up to temperature, and then you get out and so forth. Whilst we've got that up and running, I'm using about four or five hundred watts in terms of the infotainment, you know, the general electronics of the cars, the lights, that sort of stuff. So now let me turn on all the features of this luxury GV70. I've got heated seats, I want that on maximum. I want heated steering wheel, that's good, and whole body massage seats. Uh, ooh, left cheek, ooh, right cheek. See, now I'm using 850 watts. So it appears heated seats, steering wheel, the massage seats, if you've got all this on, you're using about 200 watts. Obviously, again, that will fluctuate, but that's, that's a small amount compared to the heating, but it does accumulate. If you, for whatever reason, want to eke out the range, turn off your massage seats. Some people will no doubt in the comments section now be saying, I turn off my heating in the car and just use heated seats because I'm heating the person instead of the whole car. Yes, that's more efficient, and if you need to, it's an option, which is why I was always which is why I would always spec heated seats in an EV. But again, I bought this car to use the car as a car. I don't want this sort of compromise unless I really, really need to. The biggest factor when driving at any time of the year when it comes to affecting efficiency, fuel efficiency, costs, range, whatever you want to call it, is you, me, the driver. Now this is something you should already know. If you drive fast, you'll use more fuel than if you drive slow. It's a bit of a given. I drove to work, which is about 90 odd miles, um, and drove economically on the way there, and then drove at more Audi speeds on the way back. In the Eco Run, I got 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. It's, it's not an efficient EV, but it's 3.2. Then on the way back, in what will be less efficient if it wasn't for an accident which meant a third of the journey was at 20 mile an hour but on the way back i got i think it was 2.6 but in reality because i've done this before it would have been about 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour had that accident not slowed everything down and made the journey more efficient so we're looking at a rough difference of in this car anyway 0.8 miles per kilowatt hour now if we put that into some sort of range calculations that makes a big difference the GV70 has a roughly 74 kilowatt hour usable battery capacity. So at 3.2 on the efficient journey, then that will give us a range rounded up to two of 237 miles. At 2.4, so the less efficient return journey, then that will give us a range of, again rounded off, 178 miles, which is a difference of, or a, a reduction of 59 miles. So you can get a 60 miles extra range in that car just by adjusting your driving style. Oh, and all hail, whiteboard of truth. Now, another obvious thing which you should be checking, I would say at least every month, but certainly between winter and summer, are your tire pressures. Because essentially that is, well, A, safer, because you've got the correct tire pressures and it will affect efficiency. Not massively, but it does affect efficiency again in any car if the last time you checked it was what august september we're in the you know coming up to the end of november as i film this well it was warm then the temperature being at, well zero degrees now means that the air is colder it's more dense and the tire pressures have dropped so even if there's nothing wrong with your tires and again you checked them and everything was perfectly fine back in august september the tire pressures in theory will be too low now because of the temperature decreasing. Obviously doing your tires uh, means that the tires will wear more evenly, they'll last longer, and that in itself saves you, mo saves you money. Saves you money, saves you money, shut up. And that's it, effectively, apart from one last little tip. It won't save you money, but it could save you a lot of problems. Screen wash. Now in a petrol diesel car, if the lines freeze up, the huge amount of waste heat that comes out of that engine will defrost the 
washer jet line. So you can zzz, zzz, you can squirt your windscreen again and you're back to normal. With an EV, you don't have that monumental waste of energy. So put a much lower, in terms of temperature or a higher concentration of screen wash in your car, because then it won't freeze at all. Once it has frozen, if it does happen in an EV, then you have to wait for the ambient temperature to climb for it to defrost again, because again, of that lack of waste heat. Uh, this is the one I go for. I'll put a link to this in the description if you're really bothered. It's uh, pre-stone stuff. This is not sponsored, I should point out, uh, but I found that to be brilliant. Hopefully, this has helped you out during the winter. I just wish I'd have done this before winter, so it'd probably be more useful to you. Either way, thanks for watching. See you soon. Oh, and don't forget, for 99p a month, you can become a member. So that's not just subscribing, that's clicking the join button for a membership where you get the videos on Sunday instead of Friday and you will get unique members only videos as well. So again, thanks for watching, see you soon.